Midas Engine Step-by-Step -step RC Tutorial Midas Engine has a ribbon menu at the top which is divided into different tabs. All these tabs are arranged as per the work procedure from left to right. On the left, there is a tree menu. The tree menu also has different tabs. There is model tab in which you get information about grid lines, references, properties, members that are used. There is analysis tab which gives information regarding the loads, functions, coefficients and boundary conditions. There is a design tab that gives information about design groups and design cases. Display tree menu have been given for changing background very easily or changing to any view. There is a table tree menu to easily access any table for the information. At the bottom, we have the properties menu. If you click on any of the member, all of its properties will be displayed over here. We can also modify its properties from this menu. Below, over here, is a message window. In this message window, we can see any errors or warnings while we are giving the command. This is the workspace of Midas Engine. X and Y are in the horizontal plane and Z is the vertical axis. The workspace is divided into three modes, 3D, plane and story. Let us begin with the modeling in Midas Engine. There are five different methods of modeling in Engine. You can choose any method as required for or as convenient for your project. The first type of modeling method is using importing functions. We can import text file, import stat file, 3D, DWG as well as DXF files. Second type of modeling is by using the tracing file. We can actually trace architectural drawings to create members such as beams, shear walls and columns. The third type of modeling is with the help of 3D grid lines. We can generate the grid lines and convert them into members. The fourth type of modeling is by the coordinate system. We can create any member using coordinates X, Y, Z. The last type of modeling method is the body. You can sketch your entire structure and parts of that sketch can be converted into members. In this video, we are going to make use of two different types of modeling methods. We will use the grid line method and we will use the member method as well. So let us start creating a grid line first. In Midas Engine, we can have n number of grid lines. The menu of any command opens up at the bottom of the workspace. Let us start with providing the spaces in the x direction. We can write the notation as five numbers at the rate four meters of spacing. In the y direction, we are choosing to have three numbers of spacing at five meters apart. Thereafter, we will have two numbers of spacings at 2.5 meters apart. For now, let us have a level of four meter. We can click on apply over here or we can simply press enter from our keyboard. This is a 3D grid line. To see the entire grid line perfectly on the screen or to zoom extent, you can click on the scroll button of your mouse and click on this home to view all the grid lines in the isometric view. 
You can also access the front view wherever your mouse is by simply clicking on the scroll button and going to the front. Now let us see how to convert these 3D grid lines into members. For that, we have the command right over here. Convert into members. We can convert all the lines into beams, columns, shear walls and slabs. Before we go ahead and create these beams and columns, we will look at the section properties and material property definitions. By default, there are eight numbers of section properties both RC and steel defined. However, these are associated with European material properties. These properties can be seen in the model tree menu. We can modify these properties. Simply right click on them and say modify. You can change the code to BS and select any of the grade of concrete. This icon right over here indicates concrete and this one indicates steel. So concrete material BS30, C30 has been chosen. You can click on OK. So now C30 is going to be utilized for all these predefined section properties. These three section properties are concrete section properties. If you'd like to change these section properties, then you can simply right click on them and say modify. A separate page will open up for section property definition. Here you can sketch any shape very easily for the section. If you would like to make any modifications, you can simply double click on the measurement and change the value. Double click, press enter to confirm. After doing the modifications, you can simply click on apply and close. So now our SB 400 by 600 is actually SB 300 by 500. You can right click and say rename. You can call this as 300 by 500. I'd include B in it and press enter. Now let us go ahead and convert our grid lines into members using the newly modified section properties. So we select all the horizontal grid lines, select the section property. So that is the third one, B300 by 500, which is associated with C30 material property and click on apply. So we can see here all the beams are generated. Similarly, let us create columns. So we will select the column from the type and select the section property. Let us use SB500 by 500 associated with C30 material property. We can simply drag around the entire structure or all the grid lines. The program will automatically detect the vertical ones and click on apply. We can press escape to come out of the command and if we want to go back to the command we can press the space bar. There are few members that we do not need, so we can delete them. We can simply go to the different views, select those members and press delete from the keyboard. Similarly, I will be deleting these members. At this location, I'm going to create shear wall. To create the shear wall, we can go back to the convert into member by pressing the spacebar from the keyboard. We'll go to the type wall. 
In the wall type, we can choose the thickness and the element type. We have three different types of wall elements. There is wall plate meshed, as in the wall will be made of plate elements. They will be meshed by the program automatically. Then there is wall plate not meshed. Wall plate not meshed is a type of element which comprises of rigid beam at the top and bottom connected by a white column. This one will take the in-plane as well as out-of-plane bending. Wall membrane is a similar type of element. However, it will not take the out-of-plane bending. It will only have in-plane bending. So let us select the wall plate not meshed, which is a generalized type of wall element that will take both in-plane and out-of-plane forces. To create these walls, we can go again to the top view and select the grid lines. We can see the preview before clicking on apply. Press escape to come out of the command. These beams are not required, so I just select them and press delete from the keyboard. We need one additional beam in between. So we will go to the member tab. We will go for beam. Section is already selected. All we need to do is snap on to create our member. So we are done over here with the frame elements and the wall elements. Now we will go ahead to create the slab. So we can click here on the slab and we will choose 150 thickness. Again for the slab, there are two types. The slab can take both in-plane and out-of-plane by using plate out-in type of slab. And there is membrane type which will behave like a conventional slab. Let us use membrane type. To create the slab, we can simply select all the beams which are surrounding it. We can look at the preview and simply click on apply. Press escape to come out of the command. So this is how easily we have generated slabs. In Midas engine, we can choose not to have these slabs. If we do not want to design these slabs, we can directly transfer the slab load onto the beams using a flow load command. Next, let us go ahead and generate stories. For that, we will go to the structure tab, story, story data. In Midas engine, we can create n number of analysis cases. We can choose which part of the structure is to be analyzed. And for that, there is so story set control. Also, you can have multiple towers analyzed in one model itself. For that as well, you can have different story sets. You will get different results for different story sets. That is usually beneficial when you have to check the trip separately for each tower. So right now we will have one tower. We'll click on OK. And let us auto generate the story data from whatever we have on our screen. So we have selected all the members and we'll click on OK. The program has automatically detected the height and the levels. We can further copy our structure to create more number of stories. For that, we can use add new stories so that the stories will be added and also the members will get copied at the same time. So we are going to be having five numbers of stories and that will be inserted at the top level 
and we will replicate what all the members and we will click on OK. So as you can see here, the building is generated and the stories have been defined. The heights can be varied from here directly. You can have two numbers of stories of 4 meters, another two of 3.5 and another two of 2.8. The heights will automatically change in the model. If any part of the structure you would like to modify, you can simply select and delete or select and change its position. For example, I do not want so many bays on upper stories, so I'm selecting all these and pressing delete. From the left view, I'm again modifying my structure. So this is my final model.